Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, my name is Tori and today I'm gonna share with you guys some series that I don't plan on finishing. So a while back I filmed a video talking about popular books and series that I was never gonna read and there are a couple of books from that video that could definitely fit into this one like trilogies that I've read but for the most part that entire video was just talking about books I had never read but just for whatever reason didn't have a desire to. This time around these are books where I have read the first in a series and just have no desire to continue on with the series. There is one book in here though that might be a little bit of a surprise because of how much I love the first book when I read it last year but I do have several books I want to share with you so let's just get into the video. So the first series I'm not going to be finishing is First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis and this is a recent read for me. This is an adult science fiction novel. This is book one and then the second book Rebel Sister is slated to come out sometime later this year. I mentioned this in my quarterly wrap up last video. I really just did not get along with this book. I wasn't really into the characters, the plot. I just felt like this book was missing a lot of substance for me. So we're following three main characters in their own point of view and in one perspective we have First Sister who is a part of this strict religious order and she's on this ship with you know other sisters a part of the order and really they are used well they're referred to as comfort women and so they're used for the pleasure of the soldiers that are on this station with them and then in our second perspective we're following this character who is in many ways a disgraced soldier and we're really following the consequences of that as he's trying to not only rebuild his reputation but as he's sent out on a new mission and then in our final perspective we're following a non-binary character and we're getting their perspective in the form of audio diaries and then as multiple pov books tend to do their perspectives begin to come together against the backdrop of this political war that's been going on i did really enjoy the world building in the beginning of this book but overall like i said the characters really weren't for me and just the plot as a whole just kind of fell flat so the next series i'm not going to finish might be a little bit of a surprise but that is the girl with all the gifts by mr carey the second book is called the boy on the bridge and to be fair i actually think it's more of a companion novel than a direct sequel actually let me check that right now so just based on the synopsis by goodreads i can't tell if it's meant to be a sequel to The Girl with All the Gifts or if it's actually a companion. It sounds like a companion but don't quote me on that but either way it's not something that I have a desire to read. I love The Girl with All the Gifts. This book actually almost made my best books of 2020 list back in December because I have just been thinking about this book so often. I did have it in my like awards video for the year though because I had to showcase it in some way because this story has really lingered with me and I read it like early 2020 and I just I love it I love it so much this book just has all of the elements that I love in a post-apocalyptic dystopian type novel and it is just so good and so worth the read so like I mentioned this is a post-apocalyptic novel and it does have zombies in it but I always say this every time I talk about this book it is so much bigger than the zombies it's like it's not about that at all so you just have to give it a chance and check this book out and just just read it. We're following this girl named Melanie who we would tend to think of as a zombie and we're also following a handful of human characters as well but the book starts when Melanie is being held in this facility along with other kids who are like her and something happens at the beginning of the book and Melanie along with the some of the military officials at this facility and one of her teachers all flee together and we're really seeing the story unfold through their perspective but also we're really focused on Melanie and just how unlike a lot of the characters around her she has this this shred of hope and humanity within her and she just is so kind and inquisitive but like I said I love this book so much I still think about it all the time but for that reason I don't really have a strong desire to read The Boy on the Bridge especially if it is a companion novel that just so happens to be set you know in the same world as the girl with all the gifts I would just this story ended so perfectly for me and I just want to keep the image of the way that this book ended the next series I'm not going to be finishing is the silo trilogy and this is by Hugh Howie this is a series that I want to love so badly I read Wool a couple of years ago at this point actually I DNF the book but I DNF'd it so far into the book I was more like way more than halfway into the book before I just had to just finally put it down the premise of wool is so great that it's just that kind of book that I was almost forcing myself to love because I'm just like how does it not work for me we have most of civilization is living underground in these silos but and just the hierarchy and the structure of the society within the silo is just so cool it goes all the way down to these like 
It has like over a hundred floors, people on every floor of different professions doing different things to keep the silo running. And there's this lingering mystery of what happens when people go outside of the silo. To this day, I'm still like, maybe I should give Wool another chance. But I really don't think that's gonna happen. Even though Wool has a really intriguing premise, the way that the story is told was not intriguing and that just really kind of turned me off from the story and that's the biggest reason why I don't want to continue on with the rest of the series. I do remember though when I was talking about Wool a while ago someone had mentioned that the stories were actually published what the book was published as individual stories first and kind of combined into one and I didn't really take that into account while I was reading it but but even now that I know that I still don't think I will <laughs> continue on with the series but I mean everybody seems to really love it it's so hyped up but I don't think it's for me. The next series I'm not going to be finishing also might surprise some people and that's the legacy of Orisha trilogy and this is by Tomi Adeyemi. The first book is Children of Blood and Bone, the second Children of Virtue and Vengeance and then the third actually the third and final book is not out yet and I don't think it has a release date you know at the time that I'm filming this video. So I read Children of Blood and Bone around the time that it came out and it ended on a cliffhanger that really made me want to go and pick up book two eventually. So I bought Children of Virtue and Vengeance on publication day and I binge read it because it just read really quickly despite it being a tome and I was very disappointed. I thought the story of Children of Virtue and Vengeance was so fast-paced and the just the way that the characters were behaving in book two just made no sense considering how they were set up to be in book one. I would say they didn't make sense to me. Children of Virtue and Vengeance, the story as a whole, just felt kind of all over the place to me and just the way that it ended, I don't really have a desire to pick up book three. So for that reason, um, I'm not gonna continue on with the series. And also, this is actually one of my pet peeves when I'm reading, especially books with uh, that are told in multiple point of views. Multiple POVs, I think, are just so hard to get right to keep the characters from sounding the same. And while I was reading Children of Virtue and Vengeance, it was almost impossible for me to distinguish between the different points of view without having to go back to the beginning of the chapter and seeing whose perspective we were in. So I don't know, it just like I said, it felt all over the place. And I don't really think it was that strong of a setup for book three. So I'm just gonna call it quits now. The next series I'm not finishing is a novella. And actually the next one is two, but that's the Wayward Children series. And this is by Shauna McGuire. The first book is Every Heart a Doorway. And the more, this is the type of book, I have a lot of books where the more I think about them, the less I like them. And Every Heart or Doorway is definitely one of those books. The premise of it is so intriguing. And that's what really drew me in and really kept me invested in the story up until a certain point. The novella is really a response to this, this question, this idea of what do we do with children who when they venture to these fantastical lands, like if they fall down rabbit holes in Wonderland, if they go to Neverland, and you know, what do we do with them when they come back to our world? Where do we put them? And so the novella really answers that question. There's this school that is specifically made for children who have been to fantastical worlds and are now back in our world. And so they're all there as teenagers now, and that's where our story begins. And a lot of them really can't get the idea of their fantastical world out of their mind, and they're trying to find ways to get back to it. And so I think the whole setup, I think the whole concept of, you know, every heart or doorway just worked so well. But this is not a spoiler, something dark happens at this school, and it really changes the direction of the story. And I think that's where it kind of lost me after a certain point. So I just really wasn't a fan of where it went after that and I think Every Heart or Doorway is just that kind of book where it leaves you wanting more but not in a good way. It just really felt like a setup book and then it ended and you're kind of like okay what's next? <laughs> Do I even want to know what's next? And I've realized that I don't. So the next series I'm not going to be finishing like I mentioned is also a novella series and that is The Murder Bot Diaries by Martha Wells. The first novella is All Systems Red and this is a actually let me check okay so i just checked and there are six novellas in this series actually the sixth and final one is coming out this april oh next month so <laughs> it's coming out next month okay i remember reading the murder by diaries and this is around the time where i was reading a lot of novellas that i could not get into every heart of doorway was also one of them and i was just going through a time where i thought i would never find a novella that i really loved and I'm thinking oh my god there's no SFF novella out there for me then Murderbot Diaries comes along and just makes things a little bit worse to be perfectly honest this was I read this a couple of years ago now I don't remember too much about all systems read but there is something about the character of Murderbot that still sticks with me and that I remember that I just did not like at all so Murderbot is this droid robot thing and they're on this expedition with 
their human crewmates. And so Murderbot is, <laughs> they don't like other, they don't like people. So they have this really kind of witty and sarcastic, dry sense of humor. And it really got to a certain point where I was just like, this is becoming a little bit too much. Like the snark is a little bit too real <laughs> for this little robot right now. And I remember that just kind of persisted throughout the novella. And it got to a point where I just was not really invested in the story anymore. I just kind of lost sight of what was actually happening because all I could focus on was the fact that they just had all of these little like you know quips of dialogue or inner thoughts and it just went on for far too long for me so Murderbot is definitely not a series for me. I know a lot of people who love the Murderbot Diaries and that's great but yeah I'm just I'm gonna have to pass on continuing on with the rest of the books. And then the last book that I want to talk about is one that I'm not entirely writing off just yet. And that's Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline. I love Ready Player One. I love everything about it. I love the movie. It's just it is such a great story. And I thought this book ended perfectly. I didn't have any complaints. I thought it would just work so well as a great standalone novel and you know finished it never really even considered the fact that we could be <laughs> back in this world all of these years later. And then Ready Player Two gets announced. And then once the book actually released, I already knew there was going to be a flood of reviews coming in just saying how unnecessary this book was. It just wasn't needed. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add anything to the world, the story, all that. I, I knew that was going to happen. But then I saw a review of Ready Player Two from my booktube friend Rachel from Rachel at the Shades of Orange, whose channel I will leave a link to in the description box below for you to check out and go subscribe to her. And her review of Ready Player Two was just so just calm and level-headed. It was just kind of like a breath of fresh air in this sea of, you know, negative reviews. And so I really did appreciate that review kind of getting above the rest of the noise surrounding Ready Player Two. And her review actually made me consider one day, far down the line, possibly picking up Ready Player Two. But it's like Ready Player Two is on the far, far, far back burner of my very long TBR. If I get to it one day, I think that's great. But I will never sweat it if I don't read that book. I don't know. I just I love Ready Player One so much and I don't want to ruin the experience, taint the experience by reading Ready Player Two. So that's it for me, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments what book series you've abandoned, given up on, don't like. I want to hear about it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.